to today's video on coat colors and genetics. My name is Maria Frenison and I am a senior equine studies concentration therapeutic writing major here at the University of New Hampshire. In today's video, we will be going over what is genetics, what are genes, what are alleles, dominant and recessive alleles, We'll be going over some basic coat colors and what those alleles are. And we'll be learning the basics of Punnett Square. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a few horses that you're gonna learn about their alleles and how those coat colors are made in the next video done by my partner, Julia. So what is genetics? Well, genetics is the study of how traits are passed down from parents by genes in the DNA. So let's break down the definition of genetics. And let's start by looking at the word traits. Well, what are traits? Traits are a specific characteristic. Now you can have traits relating to your personality or you can have traits relating to how you physically look. And those traits would be hair color, eye color. And in this case, for our video, a physical trait would be coat colors. So now let's break down the second word in the definition of genetics, genes. What are genes? Well, genes carry the information needed to make those traits in our DNA. So now that we know that the gene carries the information needed to make our traits in the DNA, let's talk about what's on the gene to make that trait. So what is an allele? Well, the allele is the specific patternation on the gene that determines what the gene is going to look like. And most importantly, each gene must have two copies of that allele. So let's look at an example. We've already established that our gene is coat colors. The allele or the patterning on that gene could be for the color black. And you would need two black alleles. Now, in the two copies of that single gene, you have what's called dominant and recessive alleles. Dominant alleles are shown, are shown as a capital letter. And these are the alleles that you have it. This is the most common trait. So now we have a condition called a homozygous dominant, which homozygous means two of the same. So you can have a two capital letters and that would be homozygous dominant you have both copies of the dominant allele. Now, the recessive allele. The recessive allele is shown as a lowercase letter. And this is a copy of the allele or the gene or the trait that isn't as common. And again, you can have the same condition, a homozygous recessive. You have two of the same recessive alleles. So you have two of the same lowercase letters and you're going to have that recessive trait. Now, there is a condition called heterozygous. That is when you have a mixture. You have a dominant and a recessive allele. Now, in most cases, the dominant allele masks or hides the recessive allele. So all that's seen is whatever the dominant allele codes for, and you don't see what the recessive allele codes for. However, there are some cases where the recessive allele in a heterozygous condition can actually change the appearance of the dominant allele. But that is something that we are not going to cover in this video. So let's go over what the basic coat colors are and their alleles. The bay horse is the most common coat color in a horse. How do we get the coat color bay? Well, we need the dominant a allele. So we need that capital letter A. That is what codes for 
the bag coloration. So I said earlier in this video that in order to get the coat color, you need two alleles. So, okay, we have the capital A or the dominant A and we know that codes for bag. Okay, but that's only one allele. What other alleles do we need to code for this color? You can have the homozygous dominant allele, which means that you are gonna have two dominant A alleles. So you have capital A, capital A, and that codes for our lovely bay horse. Another way you can get the bay coloration is by using the heterozygous condition. So you have the dominant A, and then you also have the recessive A. And because the dominant A is masking the recessive A, the horse is still going to be bay. So we have this recessive A in the heterozygous condition. Well, what happens if we have a homozygous recessive condition? The lowercase a and the lowercase a are the two recessive a's. Well, that does not actually code for the color bay. The homozygous recessive for the allele actually codes for any color except for bay. So you can have a black horse that has the recessive allele for A and the horse won't be bay. It will actually help contribute to the black coloration. Now let's talk about black. In order to get the coat color black, you need the dominant E allele. So again, you can have the homozygous dominant, which is two dominant E alleles, and that codes for black. And you can have the heterozygous condition, the dominant E and the recessive E, and that also codes for black because again, the dominant E is masking the recessive E. But what happens when you have the homozygous recessive E? That does not code for black. That actually codes for chestnut. So now let's move on to our last coat color, gray. So the gray allele is, cap is the dominant G. So again, you need to have a homozygous dominant condition. So two dominant Gs in order to have a gray horse. So the heterozygous condition, you have the dominant G and the recessive G. And again, the dominant G is masking the recessive G. So that horse is still gray. Now, what happens if you have the homozygous recessive G? So two copies of the lowercase g or the recessive G. Well, again, that horse does not code for gray. It codes for any other color except for gray. Now, there is one important fact with gray that you do need to know, and that a horse who does have the right coding for gray is not actually born gray. The gray develops later on as they grow older. So now let's talk about Punnett squares. This is how we figure out what chances you might have for what your foal might look like based on the parents. So let's do the bay first. Now, in the example that I've chosen, we have a homozygous dominant mom and a heterozygous dad. So as you can see, we have the capital A, capital A for the mom, and we have the lowercase, we have the capital A and the lowercase A for the dad. And this is how you go about setting up a Punnett square. Now, you don't need the pictures, but I think the pictures help. So let's look at how you do this. So you have the capital A or the dominant A from mom and you have the dominant A from dad. So in the first box, you would put down the capital A for mom and the capital A for dad. So that means that foal will be a homozygous dominant foal. Now, when you move on to the second box, the same thing will happen. You have a dominant, you have the dominant allele from mom and the dominant allele from dad. So again, the foal can be a homozygous dominant. Now let's go down to the last row. This is when you have the recessive A from dad. So 
you have the dominant A from mom and you have the recessive A from dad. That means there's, that means that foal will have the heterozygous condition. And same with the other box. Now, this is only a prediction. So when you mix this mom and this dad, there's a chance that they'll come up with one of these conditions. So in our case, there's a 50-50 chance that they'll be hetero heterozygous or homozygous dominant. And you won't really know unless you run a test and find out. So here we have the black Punnett square. Now, as you can see, this is a little different than what I did with the bag coloration. I have for the mom a heterozygous condition, so the dominant E and the recessive E. And for the dad, I also have the heterozygous condition, the dominant E and the recessive E. So let's go through this. In the first box, you'll be taking the dominant E from mom and the dominant E from dad. And that means the foal will be the homozygous dominant condition for E. So now let's move on to the second box. So in the second box, you're taking the dominant E from dad and the recessive E from mom, which means that foal will be the heterozygous condition. They will have the dominant E from dad and the recessive E from mom, but they'll still be black. Now let's move down to the third box, this box right here. Again, you're taking the dominant E from mom, the recessive E from dad, and you're going to have the heterozygous condition again. Now, what happens when you get to this last box over here? Well, you're taking the recessive E from mom and the recessive E from dad. So that means the foal is going to be the homozygous recessive condition. But we've already established that you can't have a black horse that is homozygous recessive in the E allele. So that means that foal is going to be chestnut. When you pair this mom and this dad together, there is a 25% chance that the foal will be the homozygous dominant in the E allele. There's a 50% chance that the foal will be heterozygous. And there's a 25% chance that the horse actually won't be black, it will be chestnut. Now the example I have for gray is the same idea. You can take this time to do it on your own and I'll show it at the end. So again, here you have it at the end. You have 50% chance of the foal being homozygous dominant and a 50% chance of the foal being heterozygous. Now I created a worksheet for you guys to practice this at home. Now you don't need pictures. I use pictures because I think it's a little bit easier to visualize and it just makes it more fun. But you don't need the pictures. You just really, all you need is to know what alleles you're using. So if you're using the homozygous dominant, the homozygous recessive, or if you're using the heterozygous, that's all you really need. And you still set it up the exact same way in that three by three box but you just don't need the pictures. So here's an example of what it would look like without the pictures. So why don't you try this at home and I'll make sure that there's an answer key attached so you could check your work. Feel free to add any pictures you want to make it more fun for you. And feel free to teach it to anyone you want and ask people for help if you do need it. So for the last part of this video, I wanna show you a horse that you're gonna learn about in the next video. So we're gonna take a little stroll down to the UNH barn to go visit that horse. So here we are at the UNH barn. And with me, I have Coco. He is a Welsh Halflinger cross. And as you can see, his coloration is a little unique. So he has what we call the silver dilution, which you will learn about in the next video. But this is just for reference for the next video. As you can see, he has a little bit of silver in his mane and in his tail. And his coloration is also a little bit different into his coat as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed meeting Coco. He is a wonderful pony. And he was so happy to be part of that video for you. 
Thank you all for joining in and hopefully you watch the next video. If not, I hope you learned something. Have a great day. Bye.